Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Coming up here on today's show, my Raiders 2023 NFL Draft grades. We're going to go through every single pick that Josh McDaniels and Dave Ziegler made on today's show. And for all of you that don't know, I'm a tough grader. A, excellent. B, good. C, average. D bad, F is a failing grade in my book. So make sure you never miss anything going on around the silver and black. And if you want daily videos, then hey, hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. That way you never miss a thing. Jeremy Chugs and I, we've been live for every single pick. We've been breaking down all of the analysis. I say this, if you watch this video, Hit the subscribe button, and if you don't like what you get from the Raiders Report after week, unsubscribe. You literally have nothing to lose. Also, huge shout-out to Rebel Montana for being our Day 3 MVP. That's why I'm repping the jersey right here. Raider Nation, after all, is family. With the first pick, the Raiders went with that 7 overall. The Silver and Black have selected Tyree Wilson, the edge rusher out of Texas Tech. From a player standpoint, I love Tyree Wilson. And if you've been a watcher of the show for a long time, you'll know that I had Wilson as a top player to target at pick number seven. He's long, he's lanky, an 86-inch wingspan, which is five inches longer than Max Crosby. Was it a big-time need for this team? No, not necessarily. But this was a player that wanted to play with the Raiders. He wanted to be paired with Max Crosby. In terms of our overall rankings here, he was the 11th player on our big board. Six foot five, 271 pounds. Going to be a hell of a player to get after the quarterback, which let's face it, that's what this Raiders team needs to do. You need to be able to pin your ears back and get after him. Only one career batted ball despite all the length, but to me, the easier you make it for Tyree Wilson, the better that he's going to be off. If you just tell him, hey, when that guy calls hike, go out and get him. He's got long strides. Sometimes I don't like his tape in terms of when he thinks too much. To me, though, Texas Tech did not use him in the right way. Let him be an edge rusher. Let him get after the quarterback. Let's go to the next peer pick here in our 2023 NFL Draft. It was Michael Mayer. The Raiders had pick 38, but they traded up to take the tight end from Notre Dame. This was my favorite pick in this year's draft. I'm just going to tell you all that right now. I gave it an A minus grade. It was my highest grade that I will give out on today's show. To me, the value, it's phenomenal. Like, I love this player here. He was the best tight end. I didn't think it's the biggest need, and there were some other players on the board that I did think that at least fit this need. They call him Baby Gronk for a reason. If you put a few more pounds on him, he can do everything really well. Six foot four, 250 pounds. Tom had him as a top 10 overall prospect. So for you to get him at 35, honestly, the A minus grade might be a little bit too low. 67 receptions, 809 yards, nine touchdowns for the Notre Dame tight end. Before I continue to go here with my Raiders draft grades, I got to ask you, what is your favorite pick by the Raiders? For me personally, the best pick that the Raiders made in terms of value, in terms of where they got them, Probably going to go with Michael Mayer, but I did want the Raiders to go heavy defense, so for that reason, Mayer, Tyree, Wilson, there's going to be a lot of fans out there that might not love this pick or might not love this draft, but for the first time in a long time, the Raiders crushed, and I mean crushed, in the first round, and they crushed in the second round when you consider the fact the players that they got. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's show, so please, when you're going to hit with that YouTube ad break, scroll on down and let me know who your favorite pick was by the Raiders. Let's continue to rock and roll here on the show. I said Tyree Wilson. I said Michael Mayer. Those are my top two favorite picks. And honestly, it's it's all not that close to me. I was more happy that McDaniels and Ziegler finally got an early draft right. You entered the 2023 draft with 12 picks. You leave with nine players. Sure, you didn't address as many needs as I would have liked you to do. But overall, you had a good draft. And that's something to be... I don't know, I'm pretty happy about it if I'm a Raider fan. Let's go to the next pick here, 70 overall, round three. Defensive tackle from Alabama, it's Byron Young. I gave this a C-plus grade. It's not good, but it was above average pick. It was a little bit lower than where I thought. I thought it was a little bit of a reach, I guess is what I should say. He was the 95th overall player on Chat Sports' big board, but this is the need. I've been begging, I've been pleading, I've been screaming from the rooftops, for the love of God, can we get a defensive tackle? And that's what the Raiders did here. He's got a lot of heart. 
Teammates love him. Nick Saban couldn't say enough nice things about him. He's got a phenomenal motor. And is he a little bit smaller in terms of defensive tackles? Sure. But honestly, if I look at the defensive tackle room right now for the Silver and Black, he might be the second best guy on the team right now. 47 tackles, five tackles for loss, three and a half sacks last season with the Crimson Tide. Let's now go to round three, pick 100. When the Raiders made this pick, I hated it. And I still don't love it. This is the worst pick in my book for the Raiders in this year's draft. I like Trey Tucker as the prospect. I'll tell you that right now. If the Raiders would have taken him in round five, different conversation. To me, though, it's more kind of annoying. You go with another wide receiver. Wide receiver was definitely not a big need for this team, and there was players that, Jesus, I mean, we could have gone a lot of different routes here to help build this defense. Is he athletic? Yes. Is he fast? No doubt. Is he offer you special teams ability? 100%. But you can see right there, according to Tom Downey, he should have gone in late round five at 186, and he is undersized. He does have that great straight line speed, and if you want to have a field stretcher, he's going to help you do that. To me, though, when you look at this pick and you look at the signing of DeAndre Carter, I just, I'm just i just waiting for the day that the Raiders trade away Hunter Renfro. Is he going to be a good gadget guy? Yes, I believe that. But to me, this is not the pick that you should have made in round three. There was a lot of other defensive players that you should have gone with. But Trey Tucker, I am excited to have you in the silver and black. Now, remember, y'all, we're doing a giveaway here with the blackout division, and you have a chance to enter to win free home opener tickets courtesy of myself and courtesy of the blackout division. All you got to do for a chance to win go to the link that you see below it's also going to be in the comments and in the description of today's video win two tickets to the home opener you're also going to get everything else listed there there's the link email free to enter good luck to everyone out there and cheers to the blackout division for uh, rocking with me during the 2023 nfl draft let's now go to round four day three the las vegas raiders had pick 109 they traded up to go to 104 and they took jacory and bennett I'm going to give this one a B-plus grade. To me, Bennett is a versatile player where some people have him as listed as a safety. He's probably a little bit more of a cornerback, though, overall. In terms to go up and get the pick, this was the trade that the Raiders ended up making here. The Raiders get 104 and 203. The Houston Texans, they get 109 and then 174. If you want to let me know what you thought about this trade down in the comments, please let me do or please do so. Is he a little bit undersized? Yeah, he's 5'10", 188. A lot of the Raiders are going for smaller undersized corners, it looks like. But again, the value was there. Tom Downey's 15th overall ranked corner, 80th in terms of our big board. He's tenacious. He's athletic. He's going to really be a fun player to watch and watch him grow and compete. 39 tackles, 2 interceptions, 10 pass breakups. And I already messaged to Corey on Twitter. He replied to me. He's down to come on the Raiders report. So the fact that I got a player willing to step on the show, I hope if he does actually step on the show that you guys do show him some love. But overall, Ja'Cory and Bennett to me was the best pick that the Raiders made in day three. I think he's a good player. He's a really good man coverage guy. He's going to show you all. I'm telling you right now, he's got a chance. He's got a chance to get some pretty important reps as an outside corner. He will not play in the slot. But I did learn today that the Raiders have a lot of confidence in Duke Shelley. At least I think they have a lot of confidence in Duke Shelley because realistically, you didn't make any big-time cornerback moves, and this is the top guy you brought in. So this is a player that the Raiders believe in. This is a player that they like overall. And they will continue to look at how he can make an impact on the defensive side of the football here for the silver and black. So Ja'Cory and Bennett is the pick here for the Las Vegas Raiders. Let's go to then the other pick here, round four, 135. The silver and black traded up for this guy as well, Aiden O'Connell. I'm going to give this a C grade. To me, he's nothing special, but he's the guy McDaniels wanted. If you've watched the show for long enough, I've been saying for a very, very long time, this is going to be the Raiders pick at quarterback. He was my number one most likely guy. McDaniels threw out a comp to Tom Brady. As soon as I saw that, and as soon as I saw all the visits that they had for him, I uh, instantly listened, and he instantly went up my board. He was the 10th best quarterback, according to Tom Downey, 214 overall. I do think that he's very intelligent, timely passer in a pro system, so he is going to fit what Josh McDaniels is going to try to incorporate. Former walk-on, earned his scholarships, leaves Purdue with four years of reps, not too great of uh, arm talent overall. Very intelligent guy. Would have went to an Ivy League school, but decided to go to Purdue. 64.1% completion percentage, 3,490 yards, 22 touchdowns, 13 interceptions for Aiden O'Connell. He is going to be the backup to Jimmy Garoppolo. And this doesn't mean that the Raiders won't draft a quarterback next season. To me, 
This simply means that he's going to be a backup. And I believe when I look at the overall intangibles of Aiden O'Connell, he's going to be a backup in the NFL for a very long time. Let's go to the next pick here by the Raiders at 170. They traded up to get Christopher Smith. I'm going to give this one a C grade as well. It's an average move to me. Chris Smith, depending on who you talk to, there's some guys that like him a lot. And then there's other people that he's an undersized safety. I don't know if he's going to play just free safety overall, but this could be something that the Raiders look to use if Trevon Merrick doesn't work out in terms of coverage skills. You could look at Smith. He's not a good athlete. I'll tell you that right now. He ran a 4.62 40-yard dash. Get up there and age a little bit. Is undersized. Tom Downey has him ranked as his 15th overall safety, 180th overall on his big board. So when you look at Christopher Smith, Again, it's an okay pick. I'm not going to jump up and down about it, but at the end of the day, they found a guy who they thought could be a team leader. He was on one of the best, if not the best, college defense over the past two seasons in college football history on Georgia, and he was a starter there in terms of what Dane Brugler has to say about him. Smith looks more like a cornerback than a safety with his smallish body type, but he's a talented center fielder with a read, react ability from depth and optimistic music uh, ball skills. Although his size will eliminate him from several teams' draft boards, he has NFL starting potential with the right fit. The question is, will it be the right fit? So we're still rolling here through some draft grades, but if I asked you what your favorite pick is, I got to then ask you who your least favorite pick is by the Raiders as well. <sighs> Sorry, Trey. It's Trey Tucker for me, and I imagine that's going to be the move for most people. And it's not because that they don't like Trey Tucker. This is, you know, one of those days where young players, this is the happiest day of their life, and I am happy that he ended up getting drafted. However, I have to look at this from the Raiders' standpoint, and the fact that you use one of your top 100 picks on a wide receiver, that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Let's go to the next pick here in round 6, 203 by the Las Vegas Raiders, Amari Bernie. The linebacker from Florida. I'm going to give this one a B minus grade. And I said it when I was live. You can't have a bad pick when you get this late in the draft. The Raiders, I knew they were going to look at special teamers. And that's what Bernie is to me. He's a good athlete. Ran a 4.51 40-yard dash. He's a good tackler. Offers you some coverage ability as well. But to me, you... He doesn't have a lot of playing experience. Only 22 starts at his time at Florida. So the fact that he's a little bit limited in the experience probably is one of the reasons why he fell down. Tom does have this guy ranked as a little bit of a reach. However, I look at the special team's value. I also look at the overall value that he's going to be able to bring to this linebacker room because the Raiders, they need more linebacker help. There's no doubt about it. He's going to compete. He's going to go out there. Coaches absolutely love him from a standpoint. He is you know, a little bit undersized for a linebacker in the NFL. But overall, you got somebody who could probably play a little bit of special teams. And here's the final pick of the draft here. And I'm going to give this one a B grade. Nesta Jade Silvera, overall ranked Tom Adam at 260, 6'2". Some people have listed at 6'3", 304 pounds. He did play at Arizona State, but his first four years in college football was at the U. But the reason why this is a good move to me is obviously it's a big time need in this in the middle, right? I want to build in the trenches. On top of that, though, he's a run stopper. The other top note that I have on him for my draft notes is dude has heart. And he's going to give everything he's got on every snap. He's got a really, really good motor despite being a pretty big guy. I do think, though, the fact that the Raiders went with two defensive tackles might mean that they're a little bit unsure about Matthew Butler Jr. or Neil Farrell Jr. I do know there's a Raiders player that I talked to, I will not mention his name, that is also concerned about Neil Farrell Jr. and Matthew Butler being successful in the National Football League. So Nesta Jade Silvera, I'm going to give this one again a B- minus grade overall. Was a little bit of a reach, but you were able to fill a big-time need. So when you add up all those grades, okay, the way that I did this was this. I added up all the grades and I based it off the earlier the pick was, the more weight there was to the grade. That's as simple as it was. And again, I am a very difficult grader. I'll also say that my grading system and the way that I've you know done the whole draft has been a lot more accurate than the Raiders over the past few seasons. So when you look at every single one of the Raiders selections from Ja'Cory and Bennett, Aiden O'Connell, Christopher Smith, Amari Bernie, Tyree Wilson was in the first round. Michael Mayer, Byron Young, Trey Tucker. That was in the earlier rounds. And then the final pick that they ended up getting was Jade Silvera. 
Overall, my Raiders draft grades. Well, how about this? Before I give you my draft grade, let me know what you guys thought of this entire draft. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F down in the comments, and then I'll give my grade at the very end. So you already saw what I have it from an individual standpoint. I definitely wish that the silver and black would have invested a little bit more on the defensive side of the football, especially earlier on. But from a balanced standpoint, and when I say balanced standpoint, you know, a lot of times we look at some players as linebackers, safety, whatever. You got to look at it as what the Raiders try to build. They want to build offense, defense, and special teams. And I thought that they did a halfway decent job with that. So I'm going to give my Las Vegas Raiders 2023 draft grade is a B minus. I don't love it. It's goodish. It's not average. It is slightly above average. So McDaniels and Ziegler, they could have done a few different things. I mean, the biggest thing to me is that Tucker pick. If they would have went with another player at the defensive side of the football, and I believe most Raider Nation would agree with that, if they would have said taking a player on defense at round three, and if you would have got Trey Tucker in round five, round six, cool with it, right? Like, it is what it is. Those first two picks, though, I love Tyree Wilson, Michael Mayer, two picks, two players, and our top 11 rankings for chat sports. For that reason, the Raiders look like they finally got the first two picks right. If you want to interact with me on social media, there's places that you can do it. I'm at Mitchell Rent 365 Twitter, Instagram, and Cameo. I'm also over on Locals as well. So if you're not watching this live, unfortunately... You're not going to have an opportunity to win a jersey giveaway. If you are, stay tuned for the rest of the NFL Draft.